Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. I'm your host, this plugin kinda sucks. Today we'll be doing some granular sampling with Ableton and Max for Live. I'll be using Granulator 2 for Max for Live, a choice you'll see that I'll soon regret. If you guys wanna follow along, make sure you have Max for Live installed and I'll link the device down in the description. I would actually recommend you use a third party VST for granular sampling, and that's because you'll see. So it's worth noting, while granular sampling, you can sample a whole song, you could sample a loop, or you could sample an individual sample. There's a lot of different ways to use it, and they're all pretty interesting. In this video, we'll be granular sampling a whole song and trying to use it to build another song. Probably one of the more difficult ways to use it, but also the way in which you'll probably learn the most. All right, so once you have it, you can just uh, drag it into Ableton Live like this. You can also drag it into your user library or one of the places down below here. And after you use it, it should pop up in your Max for Live library. And you may notice something. Hey, it's not playing anything. Well, that's because we don't have a sample in it. So we're gonna wanna find a sample. Once you find something to sample, drag it into the granulator. It should load in. And now there's gonna be numerous controls you're gonna need to know how to use in order to operate this properly. The main ones are gonna be grain, file position, and some other ones you may want to use might be spray, scan, amplitude modulation, as well as volume or voices. To get started, we're gonna start with grain and um, file position. So grain is like how wide the grain it'll be sampling. You can change that right here. As you can see, it changes the width of the selection there. Depending on what you're going for, this is gonna change how wide you want it to be. If you want the sample to be more recognizable, you're probably gonna want a longer grain and a shorter grain will be less recognizable something like that and then file position will move where it's scanning in the song so you want that grain size probably somewhere like that there's also a hold feature here in case you want to hold the texture you're currently playing so let's say I press whatever note this is, and then I press hold. And I let go of it, and it's just going to keep playing. This is useful if you're trying to sample a texture or something of the sort. I'm going to drag around the sample selection here. You can also mess with the scan feature here. It changes the way it expresses. So this one's kind of hard to use. Seems like I'm getting more vocal textures or something. And then a lot of what else I'm getting is just like drums and whatnot. Essentially, you can play notes though with this. Now you can use it to create a melody or you can use it to create a new texture with the same note. There's a lot of different things you can do here. It opens up a lot of creative possibilities with sampling. So basically all this is pretty unusable to me, but we're gonna do one a little bit better than that. Okay, so I have um, a different chop here. This one is something with less drums, so it should be quite a bit more usable. Let's hear how it sounds, just from how we dragged it in. So we're going to widen up the grain. Already, this is already pretty usable, I think. Pretty cool. So one way to make this pretty useful is to just play the same note and mess around with the position instead. I'm gonna put down some basic drum loops just so we have something to play to. So I recorded something there and it should have recorded the automation as well. Much more creative than just sampling it a normal way. Cause as you can see, we used multiple parts of it. We sampled this forward area and then we sampled this area back here. And we sampled like these weird chops of it and had it repeating. So it's not a normal type of sample. As you can see, we can also like add this thing called spray here, which means it'll spray in like samples in the uh, surrounding area and you can choose which side you want it to do it from. Right now it's doing it from both sides, I believe the left and right. And then you can choose to do it from the right or left side. So right would be further in the song, left would be earlier in the song. So I think I can clean up this automation a bit too. That should make it sound a little bit cleaner. So one of the hardest things obviously to get with this is gonna be the timing. So we may wanna mess with that a little bit. We could consider turning it to audio. So I'm gonna duplicate it, mute the original, uh, freeze, and flatten it. 
and we kind of warp the timing in a little bit better there if we want to. So after my first session using this thing, I don't know what I did, but I broke the project file. I can't export it. I can't freeze the sample. I can't reroute the audio. There's literally nothing I can do. I might have to resort to exporting the stems through OBS or something like that. So this may actually be a very good reason to use a third party VST. Never thought I'd be saying that before. So I redid the grain size, some other settings, and made sure it was on time since I couldn't freeze or route the audio anymore. I finished the bass, did a B section. I'm not sure why I did all this though, because I can't even export the project. Or at least I thought I couldn't export the project. I tried to restart a few times earlier, and it didn't work after that. And I waited an hour, and uh, it started working after that for some reason. So we'll just say this plugin's buggy. It's not bad, it's just buggy. I don't think it's been updated since Ableton 9, so maybe this is my fault. I'm gonna be honest though, using this was like a roller coaster, um, metaphorically and physically. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something about granular synthesis and how you can use them in your productions and why you should probably stick to third party VSTs for granular synthesis or sampling. What's the difference, am I right? Make sure to check out my Patreon for project files. You guys can let me know which ones you want me to put up on there and I will heavily consider it. Make sure to check out my Discord and Twitch channel. We recently did a Rate Your Studio stream in which I rated people's studio. Uh, most of the time I didn't give a score on 1 to 10, but we, was, there's interesting commentary and it's just good content in my opinion. Uh, if you guys want to join in on that, just join my Discord and go to Rate Your Studio. To do another one, we'll need a lot more submissions, and I know we have a lot more people in this, so um, send in your pictures. Pretty easy. Discord will be linked down in the description. Tune in next time when, I don't know, I find a granular sampler that I can trust in my samples. Shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. You're now listening to Linux. A link to check out his radio shows down in the description.